My name is Chris, and I'm a coffee junkie. That's it, really. It's a one-step program where you admit you have a problem, then we sit around in a group and we drink coffee. Welcome to That's Rank. In our debut edition of That's Rank, you can see that I've put on my very best coffee drinking outfit. It is the very first thing in the morning and I need a little jolt to start my day. So I'm going to drink nine coffees from Coffee and Tea Junkies. And we're going to determine which of these is the best of the best by putting them head to head in a caffeine infused battle royal to determine the ultimate champion of Coffee and Tea Junkie. In the interest of keeping a level playing field, each of these has been granted two packages of Splenda and a splash of milk from a milk bag because we are in Canada and do not know what a gallon is. If you can tell me, please comment down below. Up first, we will be drinking a taste of Patty's Place. Um, for those of you who are wondering what Patty's Place is, I do not know any better than you do, except to say that Patty is the owner of the company. She calls herself a mad scientist of coffee. In 2006, she was told she couldn't drink caffeine any longer, so she did the only normal thing, which was to open a coffee shop. I don't think this works in any other aspect of life. Um, like if I was to put on a baseball glove, I feel like I'd be laughed off the field. Uh, maybe with the exception of the Chicago Cubs who'd uh, give me a butt pat and tell me to go get them slugger. Well, good news. It smells like coffee beans, which is a good sign, uh, given that coffee beans are what I expect in a coffee. They are my fourth favorite bean behind pinto beans, black beans, and the black eyed pea. In dead last is the lima bean. They are worse than those joke jelly beans that taste like skunk spray or awful dog food. Please, Lima, Ohio, stop exporting your beans. They are disgusting. No one likes them. No one likes them. I feel like the worst case scenario would be if Patty was a hoarder and it tasted like, say, dead cats and fungus. That's about as bad as I could possibly imagine. So for the sake of my stomach, let's hope that it's not. Well, Patty's not a hoarder. That is the good sign. And actually, this is a really, really good coffee. Um, I was thinking it was probably going to be like a donut shop coffee, but I think it's even better than that. The good news, Patty, is that this puts you in first place. The bad news is that it's last place, but we also have eight more coffees to get through, and I don't think you're going to stay there. Number two, we have vanilla bean ice cream which I admit I'd forgotten about when doing my bean rankings. I may have to change things around at the top a little bit. Uh, don't get your hopes up, lima beans. You are staying where you stay. I will say this brewed hot. I don't know if my brewer has a cold or a churn setting. I looked at the buttons, nothing seemed to spell it out. So if this was meant to be ice cream, I apologize in advance. Uh, I, I've got hot coffee on my hands here. It's not giving off like a wafty aroma of, uh, of vanilla or anything. Um, usually when I have vanilla based coffee, like it, 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 you can smell it throughout the entire room. That's not the case with this one. It's a very subtle vanilla flavor. And I'm one of those people when I have vanilla, I want a wafty aroma. I want vanilla to, to take over my entire soul, like just turn me into a real life version of the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. This is good. It is not as good as Patty's Place. So for the time being, this slides in the second place. Coffee number three, Heavenly Hazelnut. I am not a hazelnut guy. I never got behind the Nutella craze. Don't think I don't know what Nutella is. It's chocolate covering a mistake. There's a reason we don't see plain hazelnut spread on the shelves, except it may be like Whole Foods besides, you know, the Brussels sprouts extract. Like if you put this head to head with peanut butter, peanut butter's just whooping it all day long. Like it's just, it, it, it's working it over like Mike Tyson fighting me. I don't have high hopes for how you're about to perform. Hmm. Well, this is actually really great. And I say this as a guy who really, really doesn't dig the hazelnuts. I don't know if you picked up on that. Th this is doing it for me. The, the coffee and the hazelnut blend so well. It is, it's a much stronger flavor than the vanilla. 
I still like Patty's Place a little bit more. It definitely surpasses the vanilla and slides its way into third place. It's chocolate chip cookie dough. Now we are talking my love language. We go through a lot of chocolate chip cookies in this house. It is pretty much the only food that my son consumes. He's four years old and he gets really upset if there's anything else in his cookies besides the chocolate chip. He's convinced that everything is a raisin, even when it is not. You give him an oatmeal cookie, he believes that there are raisins in it. I bought him a peanut butter cookie from Tim Hortons a couple of weeks ago, and he burst into tears and was crying the entire way home about raisins. It was only when I got home I realized that there were little chunks of peanut in it. I was concerned that maybe Tim Hortons it up and changed their entire recipe on us. That was not the case. My son is a lunatic. It's a very subtle entry once more. It's there though. The coffee is almost acting like a barrier. And, and I'm thinking what's going on with the coffee and tea junkie company is that uh, they're very proud of their blend of coffee. And it's, it's evident, it's a very, very, very strong coffee entry. I would absolutely drink it again. It is delicious, but it is unbelievably sliding into third place. Entry number five is Nutty Butterscotch Toffee, or as my son would call it, Raisins. The butterscotch toffee is absolutely coming through in the smell in this one. A wafty aroma. That's a really good coffee. It, it almost feels naughty, and I say this knowing that it's organic, there's no sugar, there's no allergens in it. I, I don't know how that got done, but it, it tastes like a candy bar almost. I do dig that. And if you haven't noticed at this stage, I am five coffees deep and my mouth can't stop moving. Um, my heart is starting to pound out of its chest and I'm afraid when this is done, I'm gonna need a doctor. Is it better than the vanilla? Absolutely. Is it better than the chocolate chip cookie dough? For sure. Is it better than the hazelnut? As much as I really dug that hazelnut, it absolutely is, which now means it's competing for first place. I'm gonna put this in second place because it's being propped up by sugary gimmicks. And despite the lack of sugar, which I am so deeply impressed with, I, I, I can't in good conscience put it ahead of Patty's. Number seven, chocolate bourbon pie. It's not all beverage we got on our hands here. I did check. Apparently it's not possible to put a little bit of daddy juice into these, so it's simply the flavor. It's a seriously missed marketing opportunity though, and I want you to think about this. Hey, this K-cup is 50 cents. You brew it, it tastes like chocolate, and in like five minutes you're gonna be twerking on the kitchen counter. You'll love it. The chocolate is strong. So is the bourbon. And I'm not excited about those dinner dessert drinks. I'll tell you where this would shine though. If you threw some ice cubes in here and made it a cold brew coffee, I guarantee you, you're looking at the number one coffee on this list. I guarantee, and I'm gonna do this later on. I'm gonna pour some of this over ice and this thing is gonna be rocking. This has a lot of potential in that vein, but, but as a hot coffee, it's in sixth place. Number seven, we have tiger tail ice cream. What the hell is tiger tail ice cream? I was under the impression that tigers were endangered. With that in mind, I wonder what animal parts we're leaving on the table when it comes to our coffee. Snail shell, snake skin, camel toe, garden gnome. Don't, don't tell me the garden gnomes are not animals. I have never purchased one and they're multiplying in my garden. There's some stuff going on at night and stuff I'm not sure I want to know about. This smells like black licorice. Someone put black licorice in my coffee. Black licorice has no place in my coffee. Do, do I really need to do this? Like, I, last place, last place. <sighs> For the interest of science. How did you do that? There's no rhyme or reason as to why this should taste good. That is so good. Just the uniqueness of this black licorice coffee. I can't even believe I'm about to do this. Tiger tail with your weird black licorice coffee flavor. You're number one. Number eight, pancakes and maple syrup. Be still my beating heart. No, for real, be serious, I'm about to die. 
So you best tread carefully with this one. You are sending this to somebody who lives in the heart of maple syrup country. You wouldn't believe what goes on up in the Gatineau Hills. They just go over to their maple trees, they, they drive the taps right in and just suck it directly out of the pipe. They have no problem with tongue splinters. They have no problem with bark burn on their face. Like, they, they're, they're nuts. I best not get a single hint of Aunt Jemima or any of its cheap knockoffs in here. It's gonna get ugly. It's almost like a maple wood, uh, like a maple wood smoke, getting just like a small taste of like breakfast in a cup. That's what this is all about. It's why we drink coffee in the morning to find that energy burst. Speaking of, I got so much energy, I'm gonna be hunting tigers all afternoon for their tails. I think we can forget about these ones here. So the only question is where it ranks inside the top three. I'd say it's definitely better than Patty's Place, but not as good as the tiger tail, which is still the most unique incredible thing i've I, i've tried um at, at least today so pancakes and maple syrup you're in second place vanilla caramel kaluha kaluha how do you say this word kaluha so despite the fact that i can't speak or say words vanilla's good caramel's good kalu is probably good I think the Kaluna is uh, the most potent ingredient here because there's something in there that I don't recognize, which is neither vanilla nor caramel. It's a very strong flavor, which of course I advocate for. Um, it's not inside the top four, but it's definitely not at the bottom. So I think that the fairest place for this one is just to put it squarely in the middle, sitting in spot number five. Thank you for joining us on our little journey of discovering the coffees one through nine. Congratulations again to the ever delicious Tiger Tail. Thank you to Coffee and Tea Junkie for putting up with me today. And if you like the content, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you on the next one.